You can't talk about Christ, friend, without talking about repentance, turning from sin, water baptism in His name. Yes. That, that man wouldn't have said, here's what, or, what is, if Christ, the talking about Christ, brother man, I don't know, had not led to that subject. Right. And yes. oh man, people may be sick of this. Day. Oh, let's just lay aside doctrine. You cannot be saved without doctrine. Right. Now, this is where I want to get to. What hinders me from being baptized? Now, this man was talking about water baptism. I know that. What I'm talking about tonight, what hinders me from being baptized with that water of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost? What is keeping me from receiving that? And I have traveled this nation, and, and now I can say I've even traveled abroad. <laughs> I've been tired. And I, I've traveled, and I've watched people, and I've learned people. I am a student of human behavior, if nothing else. You know, uh, I, I did go to school, but I didn't get to graduate from some. But anyway, you know, some say I went to UCS and this one, that and the other. And uh, I heard one preacher say one time, he said, I went to PST. He said, PST, what was that? He said, Pine, Sapling, Thicket. <laughs> and they hit uh, Pine, Sapling, Thicket down in Louisiana. That's where you go to pray. <laughs> that's where you go to seek God. And, and I'd rather hear a man that's been out there at PST right. than somebody that's been to USC. Right. But one of the things that hinder people from being baptized with the Holy Ghost and with the Spirit of God, the life giving power of the Holy Ghost, is misinformation. They have been misinformed about the Holy Ghost. Now, you receive, the, you receive the Holy Ghost when you repent and you believe. There are some people that say you receive the Holy Ghost just automatically, but if you raise your hand and say, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, my personal said you receive the Holy Ghost. Now, can't you picture 120 people in the upper room at Jerusalem raising their hand and say, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, my personal Savior, and the whole city of Jerusalem come out to see what was happening. Said, These people are drunk. Look at them. All of them said, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not the Savior. Right? No, friend. That's not the way it was. Oh Whenever they were filled with the Holy Ghost, there was a demonstration of the power of God. Right. And God was allowed to make about the Holy Ghost. That's why some of them don't receive it. Then, uh, you know, uh, there are those that say, well, the gift of tongues is uh, everybody don't get that. They get the Holy Ghost, but they don't speak in tongues. Because that's just a special gift that some people get. Could I tell you quickly? I can't do it that quickly. I wish I could. But anyway, could I tell you that there is a difference between the gift of tongues and the tongues that you receive when you are filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you will speak in tongues of the Spirit of God in the other as the initial evidence of the indwelling Spirit. The Bible says, when the Spirit is coming, He will bear witness of Himself. Right. And you'll receive the Spirit of uh, doctrine whereby you will cry, Abba Father. Wow. And so, he, he let me know that was going to happen to everybody. But now there is a gift of tongues that so many out there in the so-called, well, whatever world it is, religious world, Christian world, that says, well, only a few get the tongues. That's the one that get the gift of tongues. But there is a gift of tongues that God has chosen to give to various people that have received the gift of the Holy Ghost in the past, and now they have the gift of tongues, and they will stand sometime in the congregation and speak in tongues fluently like a preacher and begin to give a message in another language. Now that message is to be interpreted. There is a gift. I, I hope I'm not crossing your theology. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I, but anyway, uh, the uh, and, and they try to say, "Oh, that's that's the tongues." But let me tell you, everybody, ten people out of ten, Come on. to get the Holy Ghost is going to speak in tongues. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. It just right. it just happened. So there's misinformation. That's why some folks do not get. The, they, they are not baptized with the Holy Ghost because they're misinformed. Praise God. That's the truth. That 
And there are, there are those who will tell you, oh, you don't need it to be saved. Out there in the so-called Pentecostal world, they'll say, oh, you don't need it to be saved. That's just an added blessing. I went to a church for a while as a teenage boy with my brother, who is still going to that. He's, you know, he's still wrapped up in that. Then you come to the altar. First time you go to the altar and you pray, you're saved. And then, the next time you go and you pray and get a good blessing, you're sanctified. And then sometime later, maybe you get the Holy Ghost. Come on. But you're saved this first time you go to the altar. Let me tell you, according to God's Word, you're not saved until you've been born yes. of water and spirit. Yes. You must be born again of water and spirit. Praise God. I, 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 I hope... That, that you receive this tonight. And this is Bible study, but uh, nevertheless, uh, can I just kind of give an evangelistic Bible study? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. All right. Now, one reason why, I mean, this is reason number one why people do not receive the Holy Ghost. I already talked about being misinformed. That's a big reason. A lot of misinformation. But now, second reason number two, the lack of of honest, true repentance. Right. I sought God for over six months, Brother Benson. I mean, I was baptized. I went to the altar at least an average of five times a week. I was in the altar because I went to our church. I went to the neighboring churches. There was church somewhere in San Diego County all the time. And I was at somebody's church. And they dreaded to see me come because I was going to go to the altar. And, you know, they want to go home. But I was going to go to the altar. And one day, my pastor, Brother Lehman Reynolds, you probably did not know him. He might have died before you. Uh, but anyway, Brother Lehman Reynolds, he said, you know, it's a good thing we've got some chronic seekers around here. Because some of you may never pray through if we didn't have some seekers down here in the altar for you to pray with. Right. But anyway, I saw God. But the reason that God showed me just, just he helped me see it last night, uh, Tuesday night. At uh, my brother-in-law's church there in La Puente. And uh, because he was talking about my early teenage years when I was living with them and, and all. But anyway, uh, one reason that I did not receive the Holy Ghost was because I had not repented. Number one. I mean, that's, you've got to repent. You've got to have a change of heart, mind. You've got to have a change of direction. You've got to have a change of desire. But see, from the time I was a little bitty boy, Brother Manzano, I knew I was going to preach one day. I just knew it. And I couldn't wait to get the Holy Ghost so I could preach. Come on. Right. Instead of wanting the Holy Ghost because I was lost and dying and going to a devil's hell, I wanted to work and preach. Right. But when God finally broke me and I become uh, a repentant in His sight and my spirit was broken, God filled me at that very moment. When my spirit was broken, His spirit comes rushing in. I'm telling you, you got to repent. Yes. I, I had the, the privilege. That, that very few my age probably had. Uh, when I was a teenage boy, I got to sit under the ministry of Brother Andrew Urshan uh, quite a bit. He came to Bible school up there, stopped in some, and uh, he was around the campgrounds some. And uh, then his two stepsons, Paul and Phil Dugas, uh, came to school. They were in class with me. And Phil invited me home with him one weekend. <laughs> Oh, what a privilege to go in to the Andrew Urshan home and get to listen to, to some of the things as he was, you know, sharing. But he was talking about whenever, when he received the Holy Ghost in 1906, that's over a hundred years ago. Yes. And he was in Persia. He was a Persian. He's in Persia and he went preaching up into Russia. Baptized a lot of folks, but he baptized in Rome. Then he went back when he got the revelation. He went back and said, hey, I baptized you wrong. <laughs> and he started baptizing them over. And he also realized that they had to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And so when he baptized them, as he baptized them and brought them up out of the water, if they weren't talking in tongues, Brother Manzano, he would say, hey, you go to repent again. Go to repent again. <laughs> they'd go somewhere and pray, you know, for ever how long. And they'd come back and he said, you repent it. Repent. Okay. So baptize and come out of the water speaking another tongue. That's a, I mean, repentance is a must. 